I'm so excited about this. I don't eat gluten-free bagels that often anymore, but today is a social occasion. Because I'm in my follicular phase, my favorite phase of my cycle. I'm adding this hot jalapeno salsa from Siete. It's so good. It's nice and spicy, baby. Mmm. Let's get into the video. What's going on, Salty Crew? Welcome back to another video, and welcome back to the second week of our cycle syncing videos. If you don't already know, I'm doing four videos all about cycle syncing in the next few weeks. Last week, I talked about the menstrual phase and the good foods and nutrients to eat during that phase of your cycle, and today we're gonna be talking about my favorite phase of the cycle, follicular phase. The follicular phase is basically where you feel your best. You have your energy back, your period just ended, so the period bloat is gone, the period cramps are gone, the period acne is gone. You feel more energized and excited about life. You're ready to jump in. It feels like a Monday, basically, but like a really productive, good Monday. That's what I would describe the follicular phase as. In case you don't already know, cycle syncing is a way of eating certain foods during different phases of our cycle to support healthy hormones. So if you're having hormonal issues, hormonal imbalances, you have PCOS, endometriosis, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, anything like that, this could possibly help you. It's basically just a way to like modify your lifestyle and your diet to support healthy hormones and balance them out. So in this phase, we're moving out of the menstrual phase, which is a very restful period. It's when our uterine lining is shedding and that does that takes a lot of energy from us. And that's why we feel super drained and we just wanna curl up in a ball all day. But when we're moving out of that into the follicular phase, we feel so good and refreshed. So as far as exercise goes, it's good to do try out new things that you haven't done before. You have more energy to do that. And it's good to lift heavier to reach any PRs that you wanna get to. And if you are into cardio, it's a great time to do more cardio exercises. I don't recommend you overdo cardio because that can mess up our cortisol levels. It can raise them really high and our body thinks we're being chased by like a tiger or something. Our body can't tell the difference between cardio and your life is in danger. So just keep that in mind. If your body thrives on a lot of cardio and your hormones are balanced, then that's great. But if you are a little bit more sensitive, I would stay away from too much cardio. Walking really is your best friend. Like if you can take the time to get in 5k steps a day that was my dog 5k steps a day 10k steps a day walking really is your best friend when it comes to your hormones as far as food here are all the foods that are really good to eat during your follicular phase you'll see some of these pop up in my video today and like I said in my last video you don't have to be perfect and try to eat every single food on that list not only will that be very expensive but it will just be very exhausting and just not fun at all. The idea is to just try to incorporate as many as you can. Try to make a game out of it, but don't make it miserable for yourself. Make it realistic for you, your budget, and your lifestyle. Eggs. Eggs are great to eat during your follicular phase and also sauerkraut, which I'm eating today for breakfast. And I had a whole nother breakfast plan, but I just ran out of certain things, so I changed directions on that one. Anyways, I'm going to finish up my breakfast and I will see you guys at lunch. All right guys, it's lunchtime and I'm about to put you onto the best salad ever. Okay, so here's what's going in it. We got carrots, cucumber, tomato, and red onion. Carrots and cucumber are great for follicular phase. I'm also putting in some rotisserie chicken. Chicken is great when you're in your follicular, follicular. I am a sucker for rotisserie chicken. Um, nothing is better than a fresh, a fresh? Oh my God. Nothing is better than a fresh rotisserie chicken, eating it like room temp right after you get it from the grocery store. <sighs> so good. You can use whatever chicken you want. You can use vegan chicken if you're vegan. I also really love to use like gluten-free chicken nuggets that I like heat up in my air fryer and then cut them up. If you like a little crispy chicken, this will go great too. I'm, the lettuce I'm using is romaine. Don't scold me, I reuse my plastic bags, okay? I reuse them, I wash them, I dry them. 
I'm dedicated to that. Romaine is great for the follicular phase. I think also bib lettuce is really good too. And then the pièce de résistance. Resistance. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Oh my god. Okay, the best part about this salad are the pepperoncinis. Let me tell you, I just started putting pepperoncinis on my salads and sandwiches and I'm never going back. I will literally drink this juice. I will go to the fridge and drink it straight out of the jar. It's not, they're not as spicy as like the little pe whole pepperoncinis that you would get in like a Papa John's pizza. Um, I get these at Sprouts. I don't know what it is about them, but they are just, they're like better than banana peppers, I think. They just add a nice like pickle fresh spice to your life. And then the dressing is a dairy-free Caesar uh, that I make and I am obsessed with it. It is the best Caesar dressing you will ever eat and I promise you that. I get Caesar salad all the time when I go out because it's one of my favorite salads ever and this is by far my favorite dressing and I make it myself. There's like a loose recipe. I'll give you a loose recipe in the description box but I usually just kind of like play it by ear um, and you can make it vegan by using a vegan mayo and not adding the anchovy paste because there is anchovy paste in there and don't give me don't don't say anything I know what you're thinking ew anchovies grow up grow up anchovies are delicious in sauces and things like this trust me it's not the same without anchovy paste I don't know what to tell you it, it won't taste fishy okay it won't just give it a tr just give it a chance okay I'm gonna throw the salad together and then you know I'll see you when it's done at you underneath this sky I've never been this high and you keep smiling at me and my heart's like ooh how'd you like to spin around with me okay so I'm gonna eat this salad it's my new favorite salad of all time it's so good mmm so refreshing and then I also heated up some like sweet potato slices that I had in the fridge and that's pretty much it I really hope you guys try this salad and you try the Caesar dressing. You will love it. Okay, so for a little snack, I made these delicious banana oat chocolate chip cookies from my friend Zamaria's Instagram. I will link it down below. Go check her out. They are actually so good and I always make two batches. So this recipe is for two batches. You're gonna mash up two bananas really well. Make sure they're ripe, not green, ew. And mash them really well like so and then add those to a bowl. And then you are also going to add in half a cup of plant milk and half a cup of oat flour, two scoops of protein powder, and I use two and a half half teaspoons of baking powder and they're gonna come out really flat they just are I mean these are healthy cookies so don't expect Levan style bakery cookies here like these are healthy cookies they're still really delicious but the good news is you won't feel like shit after you eat them they give you a nice sweet hit with the chocolate chips you can also add blueberries as well if you want to be more healthy um, but they are really really delicious and you can eat an entire batch without feeling like you want to take a nap and die so for dinner, I ended up making a little veggie fried rice. So I started out by steaming a handful of broccoli for a few minutes and then I uncovered it, added in some zucchini and I sauteed that for a little bit till it got a little bit tender. You don't want to overcook your zucchini. Nothing is worse than that because it gets a little slimy and ugh, the texture's disgusting. So I set that aside and then added in some onions, sauteed that for a little bit and I added in some water and a little bit of marin, which is um, Asian cooking wine it's really sweet and I continue to cook that for a couple more minutes added in a big old spoonful of minced garlic and then set that aside in the pan and added in my brown rice along with some tamari and coconut aminos gave that a stir and then I realized you know what I need more rice so I added more rice and then once the rice is all in there and nice and hot I added in some frozen peas and one egg gave it a little scramble And then I mixed everything all together and that is how you make fried rice. It's super easy and I love it. I usually make this about once a week. It's just like a really quick and easy dinner idea. And then my favorite thing to add on top is this crunchy garlic uh, stuff. It's way better than the Trader Joe's kind. Oh my God, it will change your life. I just added a spoonful of that, mix it all together and it is chef's kiss perfection. It's so freaking good. Um, this is me just living my life and enjoying it. 
and that is pretty much all I had. Oh wait, no, I have one more thing. I have these um, Thai chili lime cashews from Trader Joe's. Oh my gosh, you guys, they taste like cum, cum? <laughs> Tastes like Tom Ka soup. Wow. The amount of times I have messed up speaking in this video is atrocious. They are so good. That was basically my day of eating for my follicular phase. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Diet Coke ain't good for the soul. Give me that, give me that orange soda. Give me a grape like you see in the movies. Bubble to the top like a smoothie. You'll see. I'll do you like a nine to five. Wake up rested like a J.